Recognize this? It's a cookie statement on the internet. If you, you have to click OK before you can actually access a website or get access to a service. Who of you clicks sometimes OK except all cookies? We all get the t-shirt. And I teach global e-commerce law already for 10 years. I know exactly what cookies do. I hate them. They track me across the internet. They collect my data to send me personalized advertising. Do I want that? No. Do I click OK? Yes. So is this a true expression of my wishes? No. Do we all do it? Yes. This is what the behavioral scientists call predictable, irrational behavior. Irrational, because I don't want it and still do it. And predictable, because we all do it. And why is that? It's because if you really want to know what your choices are, you have to read too much stuff to know what you want. My children are on iTunes. Their terms of and conditions are nearly 20,000 words. Macbeth has less words. <laughs> Do you think my children read Macbeth before they click OK? There is a great website out there. It's called Terms of Service Didn't Read. And they screen for us all those 20,000 words to see what really matters to us. It's a bit worrisome. If you look at it, it says they keep your data forever, they track you across the internet, and they share your data with other parties. My point is, your data is already out there. So that there can be no misunderstanding about my messages today, I think we're about to lose ourselves in a world of data. And there are three reasons. The first is, we think we can control who is processing what data about us, for what purposes. And our privacy laws should protect us. But they are based on the assumption that as long as they inform me about what they're going to do with my data, for what purposes, that I actually can make an informed choice. Well, I think the cookie example shows that that is a lie already today. The second is, when artificial intelligence knows us better than we do ourselves, it can direct us. And that undermines the very premise that we can make a valid choice. Third, artificial is not good, it's not bad, but it is also not neutral. It's exactly as good as the data fed to it. And the result is that we have a lot of artificial intelligence that is totally biased, based on gender, on, on, on race. Simple example. If you have a company with a very su where the successful people are white, male, and of a certain age, and you feed that data into the algorithm, it will predict that in your job applicant database, it will favor people of a similar profile. And it's not only that. There are people, data scientists, who are feeding the data to the algorithm. And they make selections. And most of the data scientists at the moment are white, male, and of a certain, a bit younger age. They are biased. They have blind spots. So we want to remedy that. You actually have to introduce diversity at the level of the data scientist. So, if you introduce new technologies in society, it is intuitively understood that that has an impact on society. But history tells us that it is impossible to tell what the effect actually will be. And I'll give you a simple example, very near to my heart. The invention of the electric iron. Before that time, women were at home with an actual iron, heating it up on the stove, doing the work. Heavy work, time-consuming. So what did people think when this was the new invention? That it was easier, lighter work, and less time-consuming. But what actually happened was that societal expectations changed, 
And instead of just the men's, the, sh the colors of the men's shirt, they had to do the whole shirt, plus the children's clothes. I know people even ironing the, uh, the sheets. I tell you, it was lighter work, but there was more of it. So, our society is undergoing a tremendous transformation. Where electricity extended our physical powers, AI is now extending our thinking powers. And that results in what, in what scientists call the scored society. The AI analyzes vast amounts of data already out there. They find correlations. People with characteristics X, Y, Z are likely to get obesitas. We're going to be obese. Yeah? And then if you look at my characteristics, there's a prediction, locker, you will be obese. And based on those predictions, companies and governments are going to act. You have to pay a higher uh, health insurance premium. You're going to offer all, uh, you know, a health uh, uh, program. So let's have a look at a recent example. A few weeks ago, The Guardian reported that AI is a better predictor of your personality based on Facebook likes than your family and friends. The AI needs 10 likes on Facebook to outperform your coworker and 300 to outperform your spouse, who knows you often better than you do yourself. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, so, what is the result of this? Are companies and governments doing something with this? We don't know. As I said, the electric iron, we don't know. But there are countries out there where being gay is actually a crime. Is this tooling going to be used to select it as border controls to, so you can't get in? Are you going to be prosecuted when you're in the country? Are you actually getting a chance to prove you're not gay? Do you see that there's a shift in the burden of proof here going on? Am I having to prove that I'm not going to be abused? You must have heard about the new book of uh, Harari. He tells us that in 1300 after Christ, we lived in a deocentric society. It was God deciding what was good, what was bad, and how you should live. Humanism has been telling us now for a few hundred years that it's actually our free will that is the highest authority of all. What now if algorithms are going to tell us who we are and what we want? We move from a homocentric environment to a data-centric environment. And are we then giving a, given a chance to trump the algorithm? Or are we going to be ruled by data and live in a data dictatorship? Harari tells the turning, and a lot of scientists tell us that the turning point will come if AI knows us better than ourselves. And that is actually nearer by than you think. Stanford research uh, finds that uh, 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 the computers are better judges of our personality than friends and family. And I just told you about that. So, what is the consequence? I don't know. Think about the electric iron example. I don't know. But what I do know is that privacy laws that are based on the assumption that I can oversee my choices, that those concepts belong to a homocentric world and are invalid in a data-centric world. We need new rules of the road. And how would they look like? I think we need regulators deciding for us what is allowed and what is not allowed, and do not pass on the hot potato to individuals who can't oversee their choices. And I can't say it better than uh, Cass Sunstein in his uh, latest book. Autonomy of individuals doesn't require choices everywhere. If people have to make choices everywhere, their autonomy is actually reduced rather than increased. So how would those new rules look like? I think we have to look at the rules on unfair advertising. We need a prohibition that of that the unfair processing of personal data is not allowed. And asking consent cannot make that right. 
consent is no longer fit for purpose in this age of data. Thank you very much. <laughs>